I think for us really uh, um, our sense is that the current focus um, uh, regarding with the MDGs um, uh, not dealing with good governance itself is really an issue and it's an, it, it's an issue for us and we do believe strongly that good governance should be uh, um, either a goal in itself or cross-cutting in terms of all the goals uh, um, as a cross-cutting goal within the MDGs. But really I think the challenge in not having good governance as part of the MDGs itself deprives us of an opportunity for us to have an overt conversation about the politics of public policy and, and, uh, and I think we're missing some very strong uh, um, open conversation really about how important it is to have good governance as part of the MDGs. We think that the conversation needs to move beyond what states are doing rather, as it is right now just counting indicators to how and why, the how and the why. And I think this is what we feel that the good governance argument will bring into the debate and bring into the, into the whole argument. And so our sense really is that as far as the new MDGs are concerned, the target really is about having a genuine conversation with citizens so that we, we look at the how and the why and we're able to agree on what the legitimate concerns and the legitimate interests are. In delivering services, public services, we notice that our state institutions in general in Africa are extremely weak, but not only state institutions, but even civil society institutions themselves are particularly weak. Nigeria has some of the best laws that you can have in any particular country. A fiscal responsibility laws, laws dealing with um, human rights, laws dealing with uh, um, freedom of information, etc. What is particularly weak is the lack of implementation of these laws, actually converting the policies to action, actually making these laws become reality. And so this is a huge challenge, and this is, I think, something that needs to be addressed. And this can only be addressed by making the state institutions much more stronger and much more responsive. Civil society also in a number of countries also um, is extremely weak. And if civil society is going to perform its functions, civil society is going to perform its role, it also needs to be strengthened and it also needs to be, uh, uh, um, be able to discharge its responsibility and its goals. Nowadays, we are no longer complaining about the fact that we don't have elections. We're talking now about the quality of elections. And I think across the board, the whole question of leadership, strengthening leadership, in a way that the executives do not necessarily own, become the only institutions that survive, but across the board, you're able to have strong legislators, strong ex um, judiciary, strong parliament, strong um, civil society institutions. I think this is something that needs to, that needs to happen across the board and, and it, needs to, it needs to occur. From the donor's perspective, we also think that it's a, it's a huge governance challenge, particularly in terms of um, poor collaboration amongst the donors inst institutions within, the, within, within uh, uh, in Africa in general. And I think, again, that's creating a huge problem, not just for governments, but also for civil society institutions. There needs to be better collaboration amongst the donor institutions. In relation to the Africa mining vision, the fact that they are competing uh, um, mandates and complete, competing interests of the various donors, to the extent that we have different views and different uh, um, programs which are being pursued by different donors. And again, I think if we're going to push um, the governance issues in Africa forward, there needs to be better collaboration, there needs to be better engagement on the part of, go uh, on the part of donors uh, um, in addressing these challenges. You know, in a number of countries, we've noticed that the focus has generally been towards civil and political rights, the first generation, the quote-unquote first generation rights, to the neglect of social and economic rights in general. And again, we're looking at this from an angle where we think that there needs to be a lot more emphasis in addressing social and economic rights because you cannot just deal with one generation and forget about the other. There's a need for us to be able to address these issues and, and for us to focus a lot more. We're looking at two particular issues. One, the rule of law, and second, the whole question of legal empowerment of the poor. Open Society has been piloting a number of projects in, an, in, in a number of African countries, and I want to use the example of Sierra Leone as a case study. In Sierra Leone, we've created a, a small project um, run by an NGO called Team Up for Justice, Stand Up for Justice. It's a, it's a program that provides paralegals to work in police stations and pr help the poor and marginalized across the criminal justice system. The program has had remarkable success in that it has reduced the number of people dealing with in the criminal justice system. 
The number of people getting bail within the justice system now has increased by 25% um, in Sierra Leone just by having 10 paralegals in three districts in Sierra Leone. We believe that this is the way forward. And I think in terms of if you're going to empower the poor and you're going to strengthen, with the, strengthen the, uh, um, access to justice for the poor, having paralegals work with poor and marginalized people in the district communities across the country, we feel this is the right way. And this is one of the things we're pushing for, that we need to really empower the poor and enable them to deal with their legal and social and legal rights. As we talk about the post-2015 agenda, we really think that we need to address issues of the rule of law and issues of um, legal empowerment of the poor.